Thank you very much. Um, um, take two clocks, like these two old pocket watches, and uh, um, check that they indicate the same time. They do, same time as mine. And raise one by a couple of feet. Um, wait a bit, one, two, three, four, and then bring them down. And if they are precise enough, um, you look at them and they don't indicate the same time anymore. It's a fact. Uh, with this old, this is my grandfather, uh, uh, old watch. You don't see this because they're not precise enough. But we do have today a very, uh, a very precise clock. This is atomic clocks, which is in Denver. There's a similar one in Greenwich. Uh, uh, there are all uh, major laboratories uh, uh, in the world. These are extremely precise uh, clocks. And uh, you can check this. So you take one, you move it a little bit higher. It's sufficient uh, two feet. And you bring the two back, and the one which is higher is a little bit ahead. The one which is lower is a little bit below. It's a fact. Okay? It's a fact that can be measured and is measured regularly. This means, for instance, that if you have, um, this makes it more visual, if you have a twin of your same age, and you go live in the mountain and the twin stays down in the, uh, in the sea, then uh, when you meet, uh, Many years later, you are older and your twin is younger. Okay? Now, on Earth, this is, a, is not worthwhile. Don't try to live by the sea just because of that, because in, in the, in, on Earth, it's a small effect. It's just a fraction of a second after many years. But on a bigger planet, that would be much more uh, uh, visible and, uh, and, uh, uh, and clear. So, time is something that flows faster high and slower down. Uh, is it strange? Is it uh, uh, unusual? Yes, strange is unusual because we don't have the habit of seeing it, but it's a fact. It's not the first time that we discover that the world is not what, what we think, right? Um, that's up, that's down, things fall from up and down. There's nothing more obvious, clear, universal than this. Uh, so in the universe, things go from up to down. Of course, uh, it's not the case because, as you know, astronauts don't have an up and down, right? Even on Earth, up and down is far more complicated than that. So we started off by thinking that that's up and that's down, and then we realized that things are a bit more complicated than that. We start off by a common experience by thinking that the time is the same for everybody, and then we realize that no, as time passes at different speeds, depending on where we are, how we move, and uh, um, and uh, uh, details of the, of the world. This is a fact. Something remarkable about this fact is that today we can measure this with good clocks, but we discovered that before being able to measure it 100 years ago. Um, we is a bit pretentious uh, here, it's a he discovered that. Uh, uh, this is, of course, uh, Albert Einstein. And 100 years ago, he published a paper. In fact, 100 years ago, to the, to within a week, uh, he published a paper in which uh, it was clear prediction that clocks go faster, high, and, and slower now. It's general relativity. Um, and it was not possible to check this for decades. Now we can check it uh, easily. Not only, um, but we need to know this. I tell you a story, and I think this makes clear how he was ahead of, how much he was ahead of his time. Um, you all have the, you all know what's a GPS, a sort of satellite navigator in the, in, in the car. This works with some satellites up there, which have clocks up there, which have singles, and in the machine there is some, some calculation that allows you to locate themselves. The system was put up by the Americans and by the American army, by the American army. So when it was put up, the engineers that designed it uh, were told by the physicists, careful, because up there, Times goes faster, so your clock are going to go faster than what you think. The engineer said, all right, so we'll include in the software something to correct that. But the project was run by the army, 
So the generals of the army, when they saw the project, that time goes faster there, they said, come on, that's nonsense. And it's ground to us, if you... And uh, the first satellites were sent up with a switch because uh, the army didn't trust the physicists in this funny idea that time goes at a different speed here and there. And uh, of course, with, without taking this into account, the system would not work. Uh, the GPS would not work. So even the, 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 the generals had to uh, accept the idea that uh, um, time goes at different speed uh, uh, up and down. Now, how did he figure this out? How could he uh, predict that something will happen that uh, late, only much later was verified? Uh, careful. Uh, he had based his thinking, Einstein based on thinking, on the fact that there was a lot of knowledge, of course, 1915, about the physics of the world. So on the one hand, there was uh, Newton theory, the, the theory that described carefully how things fall. On the other, Maxwell theory and his own special relativity. And these two parts of the knowledge, our knowledge of the world, did not fit well. So basing on that and trying to see how they could fit, he was able to realize that there is a way to fit them only at the price of changing the way we think about time. So he could predict that, he uh, realizes larger conceptual description of the world, generativity, where time is not what we uh, used to think. And why this is interesting? Because uh, we are sort of in the same situation. Today, we have Einstein theory, generativity, this theory he did uh, Einstein years, 100 years ago, and we have quantum mechanics. And Einstein theory says that time goes at different speed in different places, Quantum mechanics thought about fluctuations and probabilities, and the two things, again, don't fit together. And in the effort of trying to put the two together, we are back again in the situation of Einstein and forced once again, in order to bring the two together, to change what we think about time. The theory that should bring the two together, it's called quantum gravity, it's my field of, uh, of research, and it's supposed to describe what happened inside a black hole, at the origin of the universe, or in, uh, this is an artistic picture, of course, what happened in the very, very, very small, a very, very short distance, where sort of space is like fluctuating and jumping around all the way. Now, how do you do that? Well, you try to do what Einstein did. You take the two pieces and you try to fit together, and uh, these two gentlemen, uh, uh, John Wheeler and Bryce David, uh, uh, were well, the first one who succeeded sort of writing the equation that put the two together. I've written the equation here. I'm not going to explain the details of this equation. Um, but I want to point out the fact that this equation has something absolutely remarkable. In fact, does not have something, and that's absolutely remarkable, and does not have a time variable there. If you remember anything about your uh, physics uh, at school, there is time everywhere. Because physics, how things change in time. So velocity, acceleration is, is, is changing of position in time. Here, there's no time. So this is supposed to be the fundamental equation that describes how space moves and everything, and the so basic equation of the world, and there is no time. What does it mean? It means that, most presumably, we have once again to update our thinking about time. Not only time goes different speed here and there and, and elsewhere, but to think at large in the universe, we have to understand that there's no time. So now I have probably zero, one minute to explain to you what it means to have no time. Um, take a, phenom a physical phenomenon like this one. This is a pendulum that oscillates in time. So if you, if you go to school, uh, high school, they tell you there's an equation that describes then, that describes how the position changes in time. Okay? But what does it mean, changing time? How do I check this? How do I check this equation? Well, I have something to tell me what time is it, say like a, a watch, a clock, which where I look, what time is it? But what does it mean? It means that this hand is moving, and what I'm studying is how this position change when the hand of this is moving. So why do I have to take a, talk about time? I can talk about the position of this, and the position of the hand, and how they move one respect to the other, and forget about time. I can say, I woke up this morning at 7 o'clock, and the sun rose at 7 o'clock. But I can say, I woke up when the sun rose. I can say, at 7 o'clock, this, this has happened. I can say, all these things happened together, and do not talk about time. So in other words, we can describe the world without using the notion of time, and only using the notion of how things change with respect to one another. 
Now, if these gentlemen are right, and if the physics I'm doing is right, not only we can do that, but we have to do that when we describe physics at the fundamental level. So, we have to think of the world not only without up and down, uh, out of the union there is no up and down, up and down a local thing, but also without time. Time is a local thing, it's good at our scales, it's good for us, but it's not good as a basic concept in terms of describe the whole of nature. That's the big second step in the changing of the notion of time, which is, I believe, happening right now in physics. Are we sure? No, we're not sure. Because these theories have not been tested, because we're working on these theories, but we know for sure that the notion of time keeps changing, has changed with Einstein, is changing again for doing quantum gravity, and most presumably is disappearing entirely. That's science, what it is. You start from a picture of the world, up and down, you enlarge it. And it's surprising, but it's surprising like, you know, you, you, you grow up in a small village in England and everyone speaks English, and that's, you know, the, the humanity speak English, and then you cross the channel and both speak, both people speak French. So the world is different from what we're used to, from our small uh, parochial view of it. Science is going larger and larger and larger. So time, if this is what I said, is correct, uh, uh, there's no time in the description of the world. This is a, take away all the hands, to just indicate there's no time in the description of the world, which sort of means that instead of describing the world, how th all the variables of the world change uh, um, with the baton of a single orchestra director, it's like every single, whoops, every single uh, uh, little piece of the world dances in its own rhythm with, uh, with whatever is around uh, uh, it. This is a new picture of the world, uh, no common time, little uh, correlations between variables uh, locally. Um, I think that this is science. Science is uh, design, redesigning the world continuously, and at each step we learn something new. At each step, step we discover a world which is more uh, strange, unexpected, beautiful, colorful, than any of the stories. Uh, and I think the real magic uh, is this, the magic of uh, uh, discovery that the world is not what we thought. And this uh, uh, beauty is breathtaking. We want to learn more. We always want to learn more. And for me, this is science. Thank you.